pop up to the main toolbar to customize. Scroll down to Unit Setup, we'll select Metric, Centimeters, and then press OK. Let's come over to the panel, but before we do that, I'm going to maximize my perspective viewport. Just press Alt W on the keyboard to do that. We'll be using the view cube for this video. It should be up here on the right hand side. If you can't see it, go to the main toolbar, click on Views, and scroll down to View Cube. Just check Show the View Cube. If you'd like to configure anything, just pop down to the end of the dialog and click on Configuration. Here we are, you can see the display options, the view cube size. I'm going to leave mine at small, and the opacity, I'll just leave it 50. Now let's come over to Geometry, and select the box. Just draw out a small box here in the Perspective Viewport. Now we'll pop over to the Modify panel. I'm just going to scroll down to the parameters, and in Length, I'm going to type in 54. Width, I'll type in 51. And in Height, I'm going to type in 77. I'll also adjust the height segments. I'm going to type in 2. Right-click and select the Move tool if you haven't already got it. Now drop down to the Transform panel and right-click on the bottom spinners on the X and Y axis to bring them back to zero. This will position that object in the center of the grid. We're going to use the box as a reference guide to create the exact size. This will be the front, the back, and the side of the chair. We'll start by creating a simple shape for the side of the chair. First of all, let's go up to the View cube, press on the word Front. I can just zoom in now a wee bit. I'll start by drawing a line here at the bottom left hand corner and just drag it across to the right and up a wee bit and along here. Let's pop over to the Create tab. We'll go over to Shapes and we're going to select a line. Before we go any further, we're going to turn on Auto Grid. Auto Grid is a great tool. It lets you create an object on the surface of another. Click once on the left hand corner. That will leave the vertex. Hold the Shift key down and we're going to drag the line over to the right. If we hold the shift key down, it will help us create a straight line. Now let's press F4 on the keyboard to turn on the edge faces. Click once more to leave a vertex here. Now we'll hold the shift key down and we'll drag the line right up to the centre of the box. Click once more. Then we'll drag the line over to the left, not all the way, about three quarters. Click once more. Hold the shift key down and we'll just move up a wee bit more, not too far. I'll click once again, and now I'm going to drag it over to the side slightly, about three quarters of the way up of the box. Click once more to leave a vertex, then right click to come out of the line mode. Just right click anywhere in the viewport now to turn off the line. We'll come over to our modify panel. I'm going to scroll down here to rendering, and turn on enable and renderer, and enable and viewport. Make sure I've got radial turned on, and in thickness I'm going to change it to 2.5. Here we are. This is one side of our chair. We'll create a copy, but before we do that, I'm going to change the color. I'll just click here on the color slot, and I'm going to select this orangey color, then press OK. Now we need to create a copy and place it on the opposite side of the box. Let's use the view cube first. Pop up here to the view cube and click on the word left. That will straighten the object for us. Hold the shift key down, and now we're going to drag a copy right to the opposite side, just here. And now here in the clone options dialog, select copy and then press OK. You can see how the chair is starting to take shape. Let's create one more line here at the back to join these two objects together. But first of all, we'll select the box. Then from the flyout menu, select Hide, select it. We're going to use this box a little later on. OK, now we have our two objects. We're going to join them here. First of all, I'll select one of them. Right click, and I'm going to convert it to an editable spline. Now I'll pop over to the panel, and I'm going to scroll down to Geometry, and click on the word Attach. Now I can pop over to the other object and just click on it. There we are, we've just attached the two objects. Right click now to turn off the attach mode. It'll be a lot easier if we snap our line into position. So pop up to the main toolbar, right click on the snap tool, make sure we've got vertex turned on, and then we'll just close the dialog by clicking here on the small X. OK, we'll select this vertex, come over to the panel and click on create line. Now we're just going to drag our line straight over. When we get to the next vertex, notice there is a green cross or a green line appearing. So just click again. Now we can come over and turn off our line or just right click anywhere in the viewport. Or just orbit around. Now all we need to do now is weld them. So let's select these vertices. Turn on our vertex mode, select the vertices. We'll come over to the panel and scroll down and just click on weld. There we are, that's joined nicely. Let's do the same again. 
we select the other vertices, click on World, and there we are. Let's turn off our vertex mode. And orbit around. There we are, that's looking good. You can see it's starting to take shape. But I don't think we need these 90 degree corners. I'm going to select all of these vertices. Not the top ones, just these ones here. Okay, let's pop over to the panel now. Now we're going to scroll down here to fill it. I'm just going to type in 5, then I'll press the fillet icon. That's automatically filleted all my corners for me nicely. Let's pop back over to the panel now and just turn off our line. Now we can orbit around and center the object. Make sure you have the move tool selected. Pop down to the bottom of the panel and right click on the dials for the X and Y axis to bring it back to zero. Now you can see that our object is not centered in the middle. That's because we need to change the pivot point. So let's go back up to the top panel and we'll select our hierarchy. First of all, I'm going to turn off my snaps tool. Now open the hierarchy tab, pivot, effect pivot only, and click on center to object. Then we'll go back and turn off our effect pivot only button. Now we can go back and bring our X and Y axis back to zero. Just center it here in the middle. Now I'm going to right click and convert it to an editable poly. Now pop over to the panel and in the subdivision mode I'll select edges. I'm going to select all these center edges. Pop over to the panel now and I'm going to click on the small settings icon for connect. I'll leave the submit set to 1 and then just press OK. Now I'm going to select my polygon mode. I'm going to select all of this half of the object and delete them. Now I'm going to add a symmetry modifier. So I'll come over to the panel, turn off editable poly and then scroll down under the modifier list and select symmetry. OK, you can see nothing's happened. Let's have a look here first at our mirror axis. I'll just click on Y and Z. Here we are. It's our Z axis. That's perfect there. I'm just going to turn off edge faces a minute. Click anywhere now in the viewport. The shape's looking good. Let's hold around so we're at the back of the object. I'll just center it here. Now I'm going to go up to the view cube and click on the word left. That would just straighten this up nicely for us. Let's go back and turn on our edge faces. OK, we're going to create a few screws and a top for the top of the chair. We're going to start by creating the top first. Pop over to the view cube and click on the small icon above it. This will bring us to the top view. Let's select our object. Now we're going to apply an edit poly. So we'll come over to the modify panel. And here under the modify list, we'll scroll down to edit poly. Grab it and we're going to drag it underneath a symmetry modifier. I'll just turn it on. And now we're going to select our polygon mode. We'll select this polygon. I'll pop back up now and I'm going to turn off symmetry. I only need to work on one side of the object. Press Z to zoom in. We can delete this polygon. Now let's go over to selection and select our border mode. Select the outer border. Let's select the scale tool. Then I'm going to drop down to the bottom of the screen and select my zoom tool. I'd like to zoom out a little more so you can get a better view in the video. We want to create a new loop. So what we need to do is hold the shift key down and drag the scale tool. We'll drag it here right in the center. Make sure you can see the yellow triangle. And we'll scale it in. I'll reset my move tool. To carry on now, we need to convert the border to edges. So come over to selection. Make sure we're in selection. Hold the control key down and click on edges. Now we're going to deselect these two here at the top and two at the bottom. We need to hold the alt key and just click on each one. This one and this one. So we should have deselected four edges. Now let's pop over to the panel and under Edit Edges, we're going to click on the Small Settings icon for Bridge. Let's have a wee look here what we've got. OK, so all the center pieces have been bridged, but we have a gap here at the top and the bottom. But we're going to create an edge that will run right through the center. Come over here to Segments and type in 2. There we are, we've got our edge. Just press OK now, we can close the caddy. Let's come back over to the panel and select our Vertex Mode. Now we're going to come down here and turn on Target Weld. We'll click on this vertex here. Notice there's a rubber band, and we'll click on the vertex right underneath it. Let's do the same here. Click on the vertex, we've got the rubber band, and we're going to join this one too. There we are, now we're left with quads. Let's come back to the panel and turn off target weld. I'll pop up and turn on my polygon mode, and then just drop down and click on grow. I have all my polygons selected. Now I'm going to just come scroll down, and click on the small settings icon for detach. Let's have a wee look here in the dialog. We're going to detach as clone and type in the name top, then press OK. Pop back over to the stack and turn off our edit poly modifier. I'm going to right click now on my symmetry modifier and from the fly out menu I'm going to select copy. Let's go up to the main toolbar and click on the select from scene. I'm going to select top from the dialog and press OK. Make sure we're in the top and now here I'm just going to right click and paste the symmetry modifier. 
There we are, now I have both modifiers, I have symmetry and editable poly. I'm going to change the colour so we realise that they're two different objects. Click on the colour slot, and I'm going to click this reddish colour, and then press OK. Here we are. It's easier to see now if it's a different colour. Let's give the object a bit of depth. To do that, we'll add a shell modifier. So we'll just scroll down here under the modifiers and select shell. You can see the outer amount by default, it's set to 2.5. Let's bring this down. I'm going to right click on the bottom dial to bring it back to zero. And then I'm just going to type in 0 0.2. That should be enough for us. I'm going to grab the shell modifier and just drag it underneath our symmetry modifier. Now we can add one more modifier. We'll add the edit poly modifier. Make sure it's underneath the symmetry modifier also. We'll orbit around to change the position now. Let's use the view cube. Click on the bottom icon here, and that will bring us to our left viewport. There we are, now we have a better view. Let's add a few loops. Come over to the edit poly, and we'll select our edge mode. Now let's just select one of these edges here. These ones here that go right around the centre. Now let's go back over to the panel and click on ring. Next we can scroll down and click on the small settings icon for connect. Here in the caddy, I'll leave it set to 1. And I'll grab the slider and I'll drag it down so it's near the bottom of the object. Something like that should be OK. And then I'll just press OK. We're also going to create a few more loops here on the top. I'll grab the zoom tool and zoom in a little closer so you can see it easier for the video. Let's carry on with our edge mode. I'm going to select this edge here right at the top. Come over to the panel now and I'm going to click on loop. There, make sure I have all the edges selected. Now let's pop back over to the panel and we're going to scroll down and click on the small settings icon for extrude. Let's have a wee look in the caddy. I'm going to right click on the bottom dials and bring both them back to zero. Then I'll come over to the spinner for width and just click it once. That will bring me to 0 0.025 and then I'll press OK. I've just created two extra loops, one on the top and one around the side. Let's go back to the stack and turn on our symmetry modifier. Press Alt W on the keyboard to go to all four viewports. Now I'm just going to zoom in here on my top viewport. I'll press Alt W to maximize it. I'm just checking to see that the symmetry modifier has created the other object. That's perfect. There we are, we have both of them. Press Alt W and go back to all four viewports, and then we'll maximize our perspective viewport again. Select the object. We'll add one more modifier. We'll add the turbo smooth this time. Let's have a look. Iterations will turn to 2. I'm going to turn off my edge faces a minute. Click anywhere in the viewport. I have a nice, tight, but smooth result. That's looking good. I'll just turn my edge faces back on. I'll select the object. And I'm going to come over and turn on my isoline display. This will give me a less cluttered look. OK, let's go to the top of the stack again. Select the symmetry modifier. Now we're going to right click on the modifier and from the menu click on collapse to. Here in the warning select yes and there we are. We've collapsed right back to an editable poly and we have our turbo smooth still left on. If you want to collapse at all you'd have to come back to turbo smooth and turn off the isoline display. But as I like to see the simpler result I'm just going to leave the turbo smooth on the top and leave my isoline display turned on. We'll carry on now and finish creating our chair. Let's select the bottom object. I'm going to change the name before we go any further so we know which object's which. This is the chair. I'm going to come back here to my edit poly and I'm going to click on the edge mode. I'll select just one of these edges that go right around the center. Click on ring. And then we'll come back over to the panel and we're going to scroll down and click on the small settings icon for connect. Here in the caddy I'll set segments to one and then in slide I'm going to drag it right up so it's right near the top of the object. It'll be something like a negative 96 or 98. And then press OK. Let's create a few more loops around the top of the chair. It'll be easier if we isolate the object. What I'm going to do now is right click and then from the fly out menu, I'm going to select isolate selection. I'll just have to zoom back in here again. I'll give my zoom tool. Just bring it in as close as you can so you can see it a little easier. Let's come back over to the panel and turn back on our edge mode. And we'll select one of these edges here on the top. Come back to the panel and click on loop. I'll zoom in. And we're going to do the same as we did before so we have a nice tight smooth result. Click on the small settings icon for extrude. Now let's have a wee look in the caddy. 
Make sure both dials are set to zero. Just right click on the bottom spinner. Now in width, just click once on the top dial. We should hit 0.025 again. And then press OK. There we are. We've just created another loop right on the top and one right underneath along the side. Let's go back over to the stack. Turn off the Edit Poly modifier first and then we'll scroll down and we're going to add a Turbo Smooth modifier. Iterations are set to 2. Let's turn off our edge faces again and have a look. There we are. We have a nice, tight, smooth result. Let's pop back up and turn on edge faces again. Select the object and we'll come over to the stack. Make sure the Turbo Smooth modifier is on the top of the stack. Then turn on the Symmetry modifier. Then right click on the Symmetry modifier and as before, select Clips 2 from the menu. In the dialog, click on Yes. There we are. We should be left with Turbo Smooth and our editable poly. Let's come back over and turn on Isoline Display. That gives us a nice clean result. Now we can bring back the other objects to the scene. So right click and from the menu, click on End Isolate. There we are. Let's have another look again without the edge faces on. I can just press F4 this time. That's looking good. Okay, I'm going to drop down now and get my zoom tool. And I'm going to zoom out. Zoom all the way out so we can get a full view of the chair. Next we can pop up to the view cube. Click on the small icon on the right side. Click it once and twice. This should bring us to the right. We're going to start to create the seat. To do that, we're going to use the box that we had at the beginning. So just right click anywhere in the viewport and click on Unhide All. The box should still be in the center of the chair. Select the box now and we'll go over to the Modify panel. Let's scroll down to the parameters and in Height, type in 7. Now the length will come over here again and I think we'll type in 60. Let's get back up to the View Cube. We're going to go to the, or turn this around the other way, we'll click on the left side and that should bring us to our front view. And now we can just drag this up here. Make sure it's sitting on the top there. I'll just centre it a bit more here. Okay, now we'll come over here to the width and we'll type in 42. I'll just reposition it again. Now let's pop back up to the view cube. Click on the small icon on the right side again. Here we are. Just pop down to the transform panel and make sure the y-axis is set to zero. Now we'll pop back up to the view cube again. Click on the small icon right on the top. This should bring us to the top view. Let's come over here to the parameters and length segments. I'm going to set it to four. Width segments I'll also set to four. And now I'll come over to the modify panel and I'm going to add a turbo smooth modifier. Iterations will set them to two. Come back to the view cube and let's go back to our right view again. I'll get the zoom tool and just zoom in so we can see it a little easier. I'm going to pan down, zoom back in. If you want just a plain seat, you can leave it just as it is, but I'm going to add a small piping around these edges. I'm just going to zoom in so you can see which edges I select to make the piping. Let's pop back up to the Modify panel now and we're going to add an Edit Poly modifier. Make sure the Edit Poly is on the top of the stack, above the Turbo Smooth modifier. Let's change the name now, we'll call it Seat. Now from the Edit Poly subdivision mode, select Edges. Let's have a wee look here at the, at the curve of our seat. I don't want the piping to be placed right on the top or the bottom of the cushion. I want it to go around the sides. I'm going to select one of these edges. And let's have a little look. No, that's too high up. I'm going to select the edge that's a little bit underneath. The next one down, that one. Hold the control key down. And I'll select this edge here. Let's pop over to the panel now and click on Loop. There we are. We should have all the edges that go right round. Now we can pop down to the panel and here under Edit Edges click on Create Shape. This has just created a new shape. Turn off our Edit Poly and we'll come over to Select from Scene and click on Shape then press OK. OK, we have our shape now. I'm just going to scroll right down to Rendering and turn on Enable in Renderer and Enable in Viewport. The default settings are too thick so let's come over to Thickness and we'll just type in 0.5. Now that's giving us a nice thin smooth result. Now we're going to attach the two objects. Select the seat, come over to the panel, and we're going to scroll down and click on Attach. Then go back over now and we'll click on the piping or on the shape object. Let's just turn off the Attach button. 
Before we go any further, I'm going to change the color. So I'll select the object and I'll come over to the color slot. And I'll select this color and press OK. Press F4 to turn off edge faces a minute. That's looking good. I'll just reposition it. I'll select my object and I'm just going to drag it over here a little. I'll bring it down. Now let's pop back up to the view cube. Click on the little icon on the right side. This will bring us back to the right view. I think that's a little too flat. Let's give it a slight curve here. So to do that, let's select the object. Then we'll go over to the modifier list and we're going to add an FFD 3x3x3 modifier. Let's go to the subdivision mode and click on control points. To create a curve, we only need to move the center control points. So let's select them all and then drag them down slightly. That should be alright there. That's giving us a nice curve. Pop back over to the stack now and turn off our modifier. Now we can right click and from the menu select convert to an editable poly. Let's pop back up to the view cube. Click on the small icon on the left side. This will bring us to front. Just going to pan down a wee bit. Now we're going to create a copy of the seat. This will be for the back piece here of the seat. Notice it's on an angle. So we'll select our rotate tool and turn on our angle snap. To create a copy, we need to hold the shift key down and rotate it 90 degrees down. Bring it straight down, the same as you see in this video, otherwise the seat will be back to front. There we are, 90 degrees along the Y axis. Here in the clone options, select copy and press OK. I'll set my move tool and just drag it up. The back part of the seat doesn't need to be as long as the front part, so we're going to scale it down. I'll get the scale tool, and I'm just going to scale it down here along the z-axis. Look on the transform panel at the bottom of the screen. I'll scale it down 75, just on the z-axis. This way I'll only be adjusting the height, not the width or the depth. I'm going to rotate it now. I'll leave my angle snap toggle on, it's easier than to rotate, and just move it in. There we are, I'll orbit around. I'll pop back up to the view cube again, and I'll just click on left, that'll straighten everything for me. We could actually finish the video here, or we could just add a couple of screws here on the back. We'll just create something simple, so let's go to the create tab, then geometry, and we're going to select the sphere. Before we go any further, We'll turn on auto grid. This little tool is great. It's going to let me create an object on the surface of another object. Now we're going to draw out a small sphere right in the centre here on the back of the chair. Just something small. Now let's go over to the modify panel. And in radius, I'm going to type in 0 0.4. And in segments, I'll bring them down to 24. I'm just going to grab the move tool. Then press Z on the keyboard to zoom in. Let's orbit around. The sphere's been placed perfectly. Let's flatten it a little. I'll turn off my angle snap. Now let's select our scale tool. Then we'll change our coordinates from view to local. Now we can scale along, just along our z-axis. This will just flatten it. Just the z. If you look at the transform panel at the bottom of the screen while you're scaling, I've scaled it on the z-axis to 50. I'm going to reselect my move tool. Keep the object selected and we can orbit around. Let's create a copy. This will be our second screw. So I'm just going to zoom out. I'll turn on my edge faces again. It's going to be a lot easier now to place the second object. Here we are. Position it something like this. Make sure we have local to still turned on. Now just hold the shift key down and we'll drag out the copy. Not too far down, something like that should be OK. Now in the clone options, select copy and press OK. Make sure I still have the object selected and I'm going to orbit around just to make sure it's been placed correctly. I'll zoom in a wee bit. I might have to drag it out a little. Let's have a look. Oh no, I think it's all right there. That's fine. I'll select both objects now and I want to change the color. Let's pop back over to the color slot. 
and I'll select the same colour as I selected for the top part of the seat and press OK. We need to create two copies for the other side of the seat, so let's go to the view cube first and click on the word left just to straighten the objects. Now I'm going to change the coordinate system back to view. Also we're going to come over here to the left hand corner and click on the word perspective and select left. With the sphere still selected, press Z on the keyboard to zoom in. Here we are, position it like this. We should have the two spheres selected. Hold the shift key down and we're going to drag a copy right over to the other side. And in the dialog, let's just select copy and press OK. Now let's go back to our perspective viewport. Come back here and we'll click on the word left and select perspective from the menu. I'm just going to zoom in to make sure they've been positioned correctly. Yes, they have, they're looking good. Let's turn off our edge faces now. And there we are. That's the basics for creating a simple chair. Just going to orbit around. I hope you find this video helpful. Thank you for watching. Enjoy.